All right, now we're going to talk about fungi, or fungi. You can say it either way, either one is, is correct. Remember that fungi are multicellular eukaryotic heterotrophs with cell walls containing chitin. Um, so it's a kingdom, like we said before. Uh, the cell walls are made of chitin. Oftentimes the cell walls do not completely separate cells from each other, and I'll show you a picture of that in just a minute. Um, a big important thing about fungi is that they um, secrete enzymes that break down or digest the the um, food outside of their body and then they absorb the nutrients um, and this includes things like mushrooms, molds, yeast, smuts, and rusts. Okay, So why do we need to care about fungi? Well remember saprobes or saprophytes are things that obtain nutrients from decaying organic material and that's really important because we have to have decay to recycle the nutrients that are that are locked up in organisms and that way they can be used over and over again. There are some fungi that are carnivorous actually. There's one called Pleuratus that invades roundworms as they crawl through it on the tree bark and then there are other fungi that are parasites and can cause serious plant and animal diseases. So there are lots of there are good things and bad things about fungi, but there are lots of lots of uh, different kinds of things within this whole kingdom. So fungal bodies are composed of structures called hyphae. Uh, the hyphae are thin filaments that are one cell thick. Um, and the mass of hyphae that makes up the fungal body is called the mycelium. Now in most fungi, the mycelium is underneath the surface that they're on. Uh, sometimes you can see them, sometimes you can't. This particular picture over here is of bread mold. You can see here a photograph of bread mold and the black dots there are the sporangia that produce the spores. But in a bread mold, you've got these rhizoids that are root-like structures that, that uh, embed into the substrate that they're on and they have a special kind of mycelium that can absorb the nutrients and then we have reproductive structures the fruiting bodies that usually make spores and there are different kinds depending on what group of fungi we're talking about um, so here is a hypha okay it's a single strand notice here the septum which is the incomplete cell wall separating the cells so, so we've got uh, several different cells shown here but they're they're um, they're not completely separated from each other there are lots of different things. Yeasts are a type of fungi. Here you see that yeasts uh, undergo a type of reproduction called budding. They do the uh, nucleus goes through a mitotic process, but then there's an unequal division of the cytoplasm, and the daughter cell stays attached to the to the original cell. Um, this shows you the fact that the mycelium, the main part of the mycelium, is underground. So the mushroom at the top really is just the is just the fruiting body. But both things are made of hyphae. There in the in the mushroom head, they are very tightly compacted, and in the ground, they're more spread out. Um, there are different kinds of fruiting bodies depending on what kind of fungus you're talking about. This is one called a conidia four. Okay, that makes this a particular kind like. Um, some kinds of molds uh, have conidia like this. Here's one that's a that's a sac fungus called an ascus, and these are more like a, like a cup fungus. So we've got lots of different kinds of fungi here. Um, some parasitic fungi cause a number of different diseases and in, in conditions. Athlete's foot is a type of fungus that's parasitic on humans. Candida, which is a yeast infection that you can get in the mouth or the reproductive tract, is another kind of parasitic fungus that humans sometimes have. There are also fungi that can destroy food crusts. Here's a, here's a, um, a smut disease, which is on corn, and you see how it just makes it kind of gelatinous there. Tar spot fungus on maple leaves, okay, it just cause, it damages the maple leaves, and that damages the tree. Ergot, which is a, um, which is a fungus that can grow on rye, and this produces um, poisons that can affect the, um, like for instance, if, if the rye or the wheat is used in, or sometimes hay is used for feed for cows or horses or whatever, if they've got certain kind of fungi, it causes kind of, kind of poisoning called um, aflatoxicosis, which can be very, very poisonous and even deadly to some animals. Um, there are also beneficial fungi, and this is really important to understand, uh, that there are mycorrhiza, which are um, fungi that are mutualistic between plant roots and the, and the soil, okay? And they help cover the roots and help them absorb water and minerals. There are some mycorrhiza that are essential for plant growth. Here you see two samples of grass, one with mycorrhiza and one without, and you can see that there's much more extensive root 
development here and even the, the tops of the grass are much healthier looking than the ones that don't have the mycorrhiza. This is a very important adaptation in the evolution of plants. Uh, some plants can't survive without their associated mycorrhiza, so it's really important that we understand that there are definitely uh, mutualistic and beneficial things that occur from, from some fungi. There are lots of different uses of fungi. Okay, There are antibiotics that we get from fungi like penicillin from, from the penicillium mold that we see right here. And there are others like tetracycline, cyclosporin, cephalosporin, and so forth that can grow on nutrient agar just like the bacteria can. And remember that when the, when the fungi are there, they're producing these toxins to the bacteria that can actually interfere with the cell wall formation interfere with the ribosomes making the cell walls, which does not allow the bacteria to produce new cell walls, and that means they're going to die. Um, this picture shows antibiotic resistance. This is similar to the, one that the, to the lab that you did in class. You see here you've got your background um, bacteria that are all growing here, and then you've got a number of discs that have been that have been soaked in various kinds of antibiotics, and we're looking at the zone of inhibition here. Okay, and remember the inhibition is is how far out the um, uh, antibiotic extends into the um, into the auger. Uh, and has an effect on the bacteria. So you can see probably the most effective um, antibiotic in this case would be E. Um, there are also fungi that are used to make foods like cheeses and so forth. Um, they're really important in a lot of different ways. And so fungi are important not only for their, for their um, ability to break down dead materials, but also for the beneficial things that they produce for us, like the mycorrhiza and the uh, food production and also antibiotics.